Good news on a housing front for a change pending home sales in February, jumping a better than expected 8.2%. Is this rebound for real? CNBC's Diana Olick is here to tell us. Diana. Well, that's the big question, of course, Julia. This was a big surprise on the index because most people thought it would be flat in February thanks to all that bad weather. Remember, this is based on contracts signed, not closings. But realtors say this could be a hint, a hint of a spring surge. Says chief economist Lawrence Yun, the rise in buyer contract activity may signal the early stages of a second surge of home sales this spring. The healthy gain hints home prices are continuing to flatten. Now, let's go regionally. The pending home sales index month to month rose 9% in the Northeast, rose nearly 22% in the Midwest, up 9% in the South, and of course it fell though 5% in the West. So is it the start of the spring surge, perhaps being helped by the end of the home buyer tax credit? Remember that ends at the end of this month. Now, of course, the big concern is still a possible wave of new foreclosures. Now, funny we should mention that because Today, the administration's short sale program goes into effect. The government will pay homeowners, lenders, and investors to get short sales done quickly. A short sale, of course, is when the lender allows the troubled borrower to sell the home for less than the value of the loan. Now, the administration just a week ago actually upped the incentives on this program because, of course, they're seeing so many people not qualifying for the modification program. For more on all of this, you'll want to go to the blog, realtycheck.cnbc.com. Back to you. All right, Diana, thanks very much. Stay where you are because that new federal program kicks off today. It encourages so-called short sales by homeowners who are underwater on their home loans. Some details of the program include, as Diana mentioned, those direct payments to borrowers for relocation, payments to the servicing banks, and even money for subordinate lien holders, home equity line folks, seconds. So will it work? Joining us now is Cameron Findlay, LendingTree.com Chief Economist, and Mark Calabria. He's Cato's Director of Financial Regulation Studies. Welcome to you both. Uh, let me begin uh, with you, uh, if I might, Mark, and say, ask you the straight question. How much is this going to help, and why is it better than just letting these houses go into foreclosure straight away? Well, I, I don't think it is better, and I don't think it's going to help much. I mean, we're going to end up spend, spending tens of billions of dollars on this program, uh, and I think ultimately the difference in the foreclosure numbers is going to be quite small because it's not getting at the primary driver. We need to start creating jobs in this country, private sector jobs, on a real scale. Uh, and until the labor market really turns around, I think foreclosure numbers Cameron, are going to be pretty high. Cameron, how about you? You're, you work for a lending company. You like do, this yeah. idea? I absolutely do. Uh, ultimately, you, you can't disagree that the fundamental uh, economics behind this is going to encourage homeowners to do the right thing. So ultimately what we're looking at is, is not so much how much it's going to help, but what it's going to prevent as well, which is what you've got to consider. Uh, in terms of strategic defaults as an example, which is some of the underlying principles behind why they've developed this program in the first place. Uh, if you look at the, the idea, it's, it's really down to three core principles. It's down to what it's going to do for home ownership in terms of uh, debt forgiveness on the HAMP program. Cameron, uh, can, can, I'm sorry to interrupt yeah. you. It's, it's just such a short time period. Mark, look, I understand where Cato would be philosophically opposed yeah. maybe to giving people money to get out of this, but doesn't Absolutely this important. actually get to the idea of shrinking that bid and ask between what is owed the bank and what it's really going to sell for? And the problem has been banks have been fighting short sales because they think they're going to get more money, and doesn't this throw them a bone? And isn't even maybe to you more irksome that they're giving money to the banks to let these go to I mean, short we, sales? The vast majority of the money in this program will go to the banks. I mean, we're basically paying banks for worthless loans. I mean, look at the seconds. If you go to foreclosure, most of these second liens are worth zero. So I understand six cents doesn't sound a lot, but that's going to add up to ten, twenty billion dollars potentially to pay lenders for loans that are worth nothing. I mean, that's fundamentally not fair. I guess part of the maybe the fundamental assumption that I would disagree with is we need to stop propping up housing prices and stop propping up the housing market. The best way to get rid of an oversupply of housing is to let prices come down for the market to clear. And I think the pain from that so, will be far less in the long run. So, than Cameron, to... address that point specifically, yeah. the idea that, that the best way really to get the, the health back into the market is to let the market process this and Here's... not be doing a sort of uh, subsidies left and right. Here's what this does. It, it stops a tsunami. If you want a tsunami, go without this program. And there's, there's no other alternatives being provided, by the way. Uh, what this does, it does rise the tide. I don't like that aspect, but it's the better of two poor alternatives. Um, it also addresses and encourages those who are current on their mortgage uh, to do the right thing as well by giving them some incentives. 
for the short refi program. Di 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 guys, so. that's, not, that's not how it's going to work. It's not going to be people who are current on their mortgage. You're going to have to be in trouble. But what I see really is the devil's going to be in the paperwork on this one. You talk about those second lien holders. They have been the ones holding up the modification process and, hold, and keeping folks going toward foreclosure. So if you do pay the second lien holders, right. that's going to help a lot. But again, when we talk to folks on the ground level about short sales, talk to realtors who deal in short sales, the biggest problem is paperwork, time, and fraud.